The euro, praised it or not, has become one of the most important currencies in the world, being the sole legal tender in more than 20 countries. The euro is the sole currency of countries including Germany, France, Italy, Finland, and Slovakia, all very different countries with very different histories and symbols. This all means that the euro could not be stylized to fit just one nation. So how does it represent every country in Europe without individually representing any individual country? In short, the euro does this by being magnificently ambiguous. First off, most currencies tend to pay homage to the history of their respective nations, often doing this by honoring important people from the nation's past. For example, this American $1 bill has George Washington on it, our first president. This Canadian $5 bill has Sir Wilfrid Laurier, their seventh prime minister, as well as the Canada arm on the back. This 10,000 dong note from Vietnam, of course, has a portrait of Ho Chi Minh. And of course, this Cayman Islands bill has the queen on it. However, this causes a lot of controversy. Like here in the US, where there have recently been arguments over the $20 bill when it was announced that there would be plans to put Harriet Tubman on the bill, either replacing or accompanying our also super controversial 7th president, Andrew Jackson. So people are pretty controversial. The Euro does not do this. There are no portraits of anyone on the Euro. Since the Euro was made to help unite Europe and make war pretty much unthinkable, there couldn't be any national symbols. And this included people. And this also included landmarks, so no Eiffel Tower, no Brandenburg Gate, no Colosseum, nothing. Simply for the fact that they didn't want to leave anyone out. But it's impossible to represent over 20 countries when you don't have 20 denominations of bill. Instead, what they have on the front are fancy arches and on the back, a bunch of bridges. The thing is though, those particular arches and bridges are not real. They're just illustrations of generic designs that kind of just look pretty. Well, the bridges are real now, but they were made as a joke in a real estate development in the Netherlands. It is also observed that the higher the value of the bill, the more modern the bridge. Europe is also a continent full of languages, which is why there aren't many words on the euro. Or on European street signs. So unlike how American money has a big banner saying United States of America across it, there's just a flag of the European Union. No European Union or anything like that because it would have to be repeated in 20 languages. And those languages often use different scripts, the main ones being Latin, Greek, and Cyrillic. Boom, right there. Very short list, no reason to exclude anyone. Plus, it also has the abbreviations of the European Central Bank in at least nine different languages. There are a few more additions, like a map of Europe, the EU stars around it, and two more features of the bills are that, well, first they're multicolored, which you know, really just looks nice. Most Americans don't really seem to care much about our monochrome bills. Plus, they're in different sizes and proportions. This actually annoyed me at first, but then I realized that this would actually be really great if you're blind. Or at least, better than the US dollar. They fit better together, but you can't really tell the difference without having to look at them. Coins, interestingly enough, are a bit different though as they are where countries can show off their important people and buildings, since each country can submit its own designs. Kind of how each US quarter has a decal from a different state on it, but all the bills are nationwide. Perhaps this could have easily done with the bills, but of course the bills still do a good job of showing what a multinational currency could ideally look like. Whether or not we can make the economics of it work on such a multinational scale is debatable, but at least we can get a good set of designs so no one feels left out. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it enough to give it a like and subscribe to learn something new every Sunday. Also, please let me know whether or not you agree with this video, and uh, also let me know what your favorite currency is, like just from a design standpoint. Personally, I'm kind of an argument between the euro and the Canadian dollar. I mean, the euro is cool for those reasons, but also the Canadian dollar has windows on it. That's pretty cool.